Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. Uh, my name is Betsy, and Erin and I are filling in for Linda. She gets the day off today. But we have got some fun things to share with you. So Hello. we're excited you're here. How is everyone today? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm in the festive spirit. We've got lots of holiday things happening this week, and I'm ready to go. I know. It's <laughs> almost December. Got to jump in. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and today we are going to jump in, before we hit December, with our November So Confident class. Yes, the Mayfair. The Mayfair coat. Mm -hmm. Let me grab it. All right. We started off um, the November class um, with two kits. Mm -hmm. So we had the white with the black contrast and then the white with the camel contrast. So these are the two kits that we featured and are going to talk about in the video. So the video is live now. It's ready to go. And then um, Friday for So Confident members, we have the question and answer. Yep. And just a quick what the video is. So this is the Mayfair coat out of the pattern, right? It's got Correct. the color blocking on the front and then the collar. But in the So Confident class, we play around mm -hmm. with it a little bit and we've added the cuffs, and then we take the um, color all the way to the back. So part mm -hmm. of the class, there are other things as well, part of the class is learning the pattern work for that variation on right. the raincoat. Yep. Um, we do have some kits left, not in these colorways. I believe we have, and I probably should have checked, but I believe we have um, all camel, which is this color, and then I think I think Deb said we might have two camel and black. Okay. So if you have been waiting for a camel and black, this may be your moment. <laughs> if they're not online, you might call and check, but we were talking about that this morning. So. All right, check it out. Sounds good. Put these away. Okay, so what we're gonna feature today um, is one that we've been working on for quite a while and we're really excited about it. So one of our patterns that we've had for a long time, um, it's had a lot of different um, you know, looks basically. So we had the Ikena jacket um, maybe 15 years ago is when it first mm -hmm. came out. It's and <laughs> 15 years ago, I'd say. Um, so we had the Ikena jacket and pants pattern. Um, actually, why don't you grab, let's, let's talk about some of these. Okay. Some of the ones that um, kind of started us out. That um, okay. So um, we had the Ikena jacket and pants pattern come out about 15 years ago, like I said. And, um, and it had, um, it was a shorter jacket. It had the front bands. Um, this is actually a different version. It has a belt that we added at the side seams. Um, just a very casual, shorter jacket. I think this is a great. Super cute. And um, it also, if you could grab the red one. So it also had some side vents um, with bands, um, which I think had a nice kind of classic style it's perfect for drapey fabric. Right. Um, although I will say this, this brown one that we showed has a little more body to it, and mm -hmm, I think it mm -hmm. still works with it. I love the belt. I love how you can take one pattern and then change it slightly to accommodate the fabric that you're wanting to use. I think that that was kind of the case with this one. We wanted to use this type of fabric. So we added a belt because it wasn't as drapey and it was a little more boxy that way. And so we added the belt to cinch it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Perfect. But this was the Ikena jacket straight out of the pattern when it came out about 15 years ago. And then of course, like all our patterns, you know, we um, changed it up a little bit over the years, um, like we did with the belt or like we did with this longer one yep. um, that Betsy kind of <laughs> had out briefly. Um, so like this is just a longer version. Um, we took out the side vents, that opening at the side. And I love it. this. Look, so it's lined with a polka dot, which is adorable. Um, and it's more of like a, I mean, it's like a coating fabric. Mm -hmm. Right. Which mm -hmm. I think when you look at the Ikena and you think about it, you don't think about using like a heavier fabric like this, but it's fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of want to take it home. But <laughs> We have so many garments here. You probably I could. know, I probably <laughs> could. I bet no one would notice. Um, yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. But then we came out with the Ikena. Two. Two. The Ikena two. <laughs> so about two years ago, 
Um, we decided to, after the Ikena, um, we had you know kind of gone through the patterns, it was discontinued, but it was one of those that people really still loved. It's a classic style, so we decided to bring it back with a few changes. So um, this is the Ikena 2 that came out, so it's um, printed and digital. And we lengthened it. We took out that opening at the sides with the facing and added a side vent. We kept the front bands. We added piping along that front band. We added a pocket or pockets, one on each side. Mm -hmm. And then also the piping is at the sleeve. So this is the Ikena that we used for a So Confident class last year. Mm -hmm. um, and that online class is also available. And in it we show, or we, royal we, Linda shows you <laughs> how to insert the piping and work with all the, the, the side vents and all of that. So mm -hmm. that's a really great class if you're a little hesitant on, you know, working with piping and stuff. It's a really, um, walks you through it nicely. Mm -hmm. So this is a beautiful, this was like a viscose crepe. And you can see, again, how nice that drape is on there. Um, so. And there's a no-to T underneath it, just yeah. in case that question comes up. <laughs> <laughs> so then you've got the short version on. Right, I do have one of the original short versions on. Um, the side facing has been eliminated. And this is out of three different beautiful printed silks. Um, I think it's one of those patterns that really lends itself to using multiple fabrics or multiple prints. And what I love about this jacket, um, Kathy made it, is that each fabric just really works well together, even though they're both, or all three of them are different. Mm -hmm. They work really well together, same colors, and she put them together in a beautiful way. And, and it it's just so worked. interesting, because I haven't, I was not here for the original pattern, so I don't feel like I see the short versions very often. Mm -hmm. um, but it really does work as a short jacket. Like in my mind, it's always the, the long flowing jacket, but it is really cute, especially over mm -hmm. the uh, cityscapes, which you have yeah. on. So it's just a stripe gray and black stripe cityscapes. Yeah, it's really cute. Mm -hmm. um, and so then my version is longer, and I think it's longer even though it's just on me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it is a long it version. It is a long yes, version. Yes. Um, it's almost like a duster length, and it's kind of this burnout silk. I don't know if you can mm -hmm. see it. And then it's got the silk bands in the front and the, mm -hmm. and the cuffs. It's very flowy. <laughs> I feel Beautiful. very loungy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So the Ikena really can be made in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. It's one of the patterns. So the one we've been working with in the last couple weeks, um, the Ikena, even though it can be really dressy, it can be casual, we decided it could also be a robe. A robe. A robe or mm -hmm. loungewear. Loungewear yes. that you can just be beautiful walking yeah just wandering graciously around your house, around your house. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I picture it <laughs> so here she is so um, the robe is made out of a printed cotton gauze mm -hmm. and that's what the main the body of the jacket is and then the bottom bands and then the sleeve bands are a printed cotton mm -hmm. and so the double gauze I don't know if you've worked with it um, it is basically two layers of fabric that are tacked together in kind of intermittent spots. The wrong side of it is just a plain white, but it's super soft. It mm -hmm. almost feels like flannel, which I think is really interesting. Just um, perfect for yeah, a Yeah, on the inside. Mm -hmm. And so we really liked the, um, it's almost like a shibori kind of design, mm -hmm. dyeing, although that could be totally wrong. But in my mind, I think it looks kind I of like I think that's shibori. the effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the yeah. effect they were going for, I think. And so we've done some changes to the pattern itself, which we are gonna walk you through. Yeah. So um, before we get to all the changes, you wanna talk about the whole look? Yeah, we want the whole look. Okay, so we <laughs> couldn't do an Ikena robe. We couldn't do a robe without having, uh, thinking about what the whole look, what that's gonna look like, mm -hmm. what your loungewear is gonna look like. Yeah. So what we decided is to pair the Mix-It tank and the Chesney pants together in a similar fabric. I think it has a similar mood to it, similar mm -hmm. colors. It's got that beautiful blue color, um, but it's slightly darker, a little bit richer, and it goes beautifully. Here, let's hang it over. Yes. 
We're gonna hang the Ikea so over So you have this. a full ensemble. Right. Right, you can't just have a beautiful robe and then over right. your manky old pajamas, you gotta have the full <laughs> thing. <laughs> So you pair the Ikea robe with the tank and the pants. And I think it's just a really nice, I like how rich the undergarments are. Mm -hmm. So to speak. <laughs> the undergarments. <laughs> that word just throws me off. Right. But, um, but yet I think the pieces underneath it are just really rich and they complement the brightness, kind of the more boldness of the Ikea mm -hmm. jacket. So the, um, the Mixit and the Chesney are made out of a viscose. Uh, slash rayon. <laughs> so a viscose. So they also have a really beautiful drape and they feel really nice on, mm -hmm. you know, um, as Linda has said, viscose was originally considered like a new silk or a um, less expensive silk. So you can imagine that feeling in your pajamas and then you've got your soft double gauze robe. Now, mm -hmm. if you are a certain person, perhaps like me, you might wear this out of the bedroom and oh, I think out so. in the world because mm -hmm, I think it mm -hmm. is such a beautiful outfit. But it is also super fun to have a really nice kind of loungewear set. So I think so. You could go either way. And another addition that you can create, um, optional, but you can make a belt to go with it. I think I think a belt's um, essential with a robe. Mm -hmm. So you just drape it around your waist, give it a beautiful knot. And you can add belt loops. We didn't add belt loops to this, but you could add, add belt loops. So I think that's stunning. And I think that blue and white colorway is such a classic look. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you see it, I mean, you see it everywhere. You see it in China, you see it in interior decoration, and it always looks so clean and crisp. And yet the florals and the prints add like a richness and like texture to it that you don't mm -hmm. just get with, you know, a plain old solid. So I think it's a really, um, it's kind of a really elegant look and fairly sophisticated for your loungewear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or to the grocery store, whatever you want to, wherever you want to wear it. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Should we talk about how we did it? Yes. I'm going to okay. sneak back here. <laughs> okay. So one of the details on the jacket, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the changes that we did to the jacket. And one of the details that I want to point out before I go into that is since we shortened the band, there is some interesting techniques that need to happen in order to finish that off. So we're going to talk about that. Get my board. Okay, so the things that we did to um, change the Ikea into a robe, and some of these were things that we just thought would make a nice design detail. So they wouldn't have to be done, but they were something unique that you could add. So um, we shortened the band, the front band, that's been shortened. And then we added bands to the bottom, and then we added bands to the sleeve. And here's the bottom band. We added the belt, like we talked about. You could add a belt, you could add belt loops. And then um, we eliminated, um, in the pattern itself, it has that piping. So we eliminated that. And then we also eliminated the um, side vents. And so the side seam just goes straight down, no vents whatsoever. So those are the things that we changed or added. Um, a few things that we did on this. Um, and so you could, in the Ikea pattern, you can do regular seams, but you could also do French seams. I think French seams, actually a funny thing about French seams is sometimes I like to do French seams at home because I don't want to thread my serger. There's the truth about French seams for mm -hmm. me. Um, but I think French seams elevate a garment. You know, it's, it's a finishing technique on the inside of your garment um, where you're not showing that additional stitching of the serger. I think it's just really elegant. Um, and it elevates it just a little bit. So here is the shoulder seam using a French seam. And French seams were used throughout the entire garment, everything from the sleeves to the side seams, everything.
Um, mitering your corners. I think mitering corners is also something that really elevates your jacket or any garment that you have. It's a, um, a way you can finish a corner in a, just a really precise way. And we did that at the center front bottom corner. And then um, on the pocket. So I think you can, you can just um, use the pattern on how you place the pocket onto your garment. But there's a few different tips that I wanted to point out. You can use to do your hems on the sides, whether it's the sides, the bottom, or the wider part at the top, you can use a pressing template. I think a pressing template gets you a really exact fold when you're pressing, and it's an easy way to finish your pocket. Or you could use a pocket template. So instead of um, pressing your seams individually or pressing your hems individually, you can um, cut out a pocket template that is the size of your finished pocket and use that to press in the hems of the pocket. And um, matching the design. So I know that we talk a lot about um, how you want to make sure and match a design of a fabric. So whether you're trying to match a horizontal stripe or match a print, um, it's a good idea to take that into consideration when you're laying out your pattern pieces. But this is one of those garments that I think you could play around with it just a little bit. So on this one, the front band, I don't know if you can see that, um, but the front band, you, can, you notice that it is matched all the way across horizontally. But one thing we thought would be kind of fun to see is, where's my belt? What would it look like if you didn't match? So I'm gonna place the, bet, or place the belt here and do, show you guys something. So what would happen if you didn't match your print. I think it looks great. I think it just adds another uh, design detail to the jacket. It makes the front band stand out just a little bit more than it would if you were matching it all the way across. So I think that's something to think about when you're laying out your pattern pieces. Decide if you want the prints to match all the way across um, and decide what you want it to look like. Do you want that front band to have a little contrast? then I would um, think about not matching that design. And um, the belt loops, we talked about this a little bit. Um, we didn't add belt loops to this jacket, but I think you could. Um, I think I definitely would because otherwise you're probably gonna lose your belt. Um, so I think that adding belt loops would be a good addition. And some tools that we used on this jacket, I already talked about the templates, um, using your pressing templates on everything from the pocket to your bottom hems. Um, it just, it makes you um, have really precise hems. And then um, use your fusy web. Fusy web is so important. You can fuse down your hems. You can fuse down that pocket. Um, you can use it when you're matching your pattern. If that's what you decide to do, you can fuse your seams together first to make sure that that print matches. So I think having Fusy Web for this project is really, it's essential. And then the other tool that was used was a seam stick. I think um, we typically talk about a lot of other pressing tools, but a seam stick kind of gets lost. A seam stick's really nice when you're working with maybe a smaller um, part of your project where you can uh, where you need to press a seam open But you don't want to have any of that pressing show through so we used a seam stick on the belt and it was really useful <clears throat> Okay, so let's talk about the changes that were made So the front band was shortened so the way that we figured out um, the measurement on how to shorten that front band is we took a look at the front pattern piece and we decided that we wanted to have it come to the bottom of the pocket. You can see here. So the front band comes to the bottom of the pocket. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, you can measure from this front notch on your front pattern piece 
all the way down to the bottom of your pocket, which is indicated on the pattern with the line and the dots according to the size. And then you take that same measurement onto your front band. And it's also marked with front notch. So you go from that notch and take that measurement and mark, and that's your stitching line or your seam line, and then add your 5 eighths so you have your seam allowance. And that's how you figure out that front band and how to shorten it. And then another technique that I wanted to point out, so you have the, your bottom band, you have to figure out how to finish that bottom band. Since it doesn't go all the way to the hem, it's kind of an um, interesting detail that you have to figure out. So what we did, because you have to have a hem, you have to add a hem to this part here, but you also have to finish off this horizontal seam and your center front seam. So what we did, so you had your bottom of your pocket. You had found that earlier when you were shortening your band. And so you're going to make a new dot at your 5 8 inch seam line. So here's your cut line, your original cut line. And you're going to find that 5 8 inch seam line at the bottom of the pocket. And you're going to make a dot. So from there, you're going to draw a line from the, that new dot down to the bottom. And then you're going to measure over 3 quarters of an inch. And then you're going to measure over 3 quarters of an inch again. And this is your hem allowance. Okay, So you're going to press it under um, twice, 3 quarters of an inch. So this is your center front hem that you've created. And then you have to figure out a way to finish it at that horizontal seam. So what you do is at, along this pocket line, you're going to go up 3 eighths of an inch. And from here, you're going to go back over to your original cut line and back down to that new dot. And this dot, this slash line here, this line here is going to be a clip line. And that's how you're going to get, how you're going to finish off your front band and your center front hem. Um, we created a really great tutorial um, showing you guys how to complete this Ikea robe. So there is more details in that tutorial on how you, um, the steps, like step by step on how to create this Ikea robe. Everything from adding these lower bands on the front, the back, the sleeve, and more details on how you finish this center front and front band. All right. Should we do some questions? We've got a couple questions. Let me pull the first one up. How is this pattern different from the haiku? Um, so how is this pattern different from the haiku? Um, so the haiku has a few more non-traditional shapes and seams to it. It has a back yoke that extends um, the, from the length of your sleeve through the back and down to your other sleeve. Um, it has the lapel in the front is um, attached to the front pattern piece, so it's all in one. Um, the Ikea itself um, is a little bit more traditional in its uh, pattern shapes. So, you know, you have a front band. It's just a stitch on front band. It's not included in the pattern piece. Um, it has a traditional flat seam, um, flat sleeve. Um, so I think that the pattern piece of two are much more traditional um, than the haiku. The haiku has some really interesting shapes. It's a little bit more oversized, the haiku is, than the Ikea. Uh, what fabric is the cuffs, the, the cuff and bottom band? So the cuff and the bottom bands are just, are made out of a cotton print. And then the body of the garment is made out of a cotton gauze. Um, can you there's yes. all sorts of down. Oh. oh okay. Are 